Hey everybody, it's Rich Brooks of Flight New Media. We're a web design and internet marketing company located in Portland, Maine, and today we're talking about Google Analytics. Here at Flight we have a holistic web marketing model, and it's made up of four parts, attraction, retention, conversion, and measurement. Attraction is how to drive qualified leads to your website. Retention is how do you stay in touch with these people after they've left your site. Conversion is how do we get these people to buy now or to make a buying decision or get closer to that buying decision while at the site. And finally, measurement is we find out how it's all working and whether we should make changes and what those changes should be. Today we're going to be concentrating on the measurement piece of the equation, and that's because we're talking about Google Analytics. I had a meeting today with somebody, and we were kind of going through their Google Analytics, and they had some questions, which I thought were good questions, and if they had them, I figured other people might too. So figured we might make a series of these videos, but we'll start off today with where you start with Google Analytics, which is the dashboard. So here it is. Once you've logged into your website or logged into Google Analytics and chosen the website you want to look at, you see by default the last month of traffic at your website. That's great, but maybe that's not what I want to see. So I can go ahead and I can click on the date the range, which is the last month, and I can just go ahead and, and maybe it's the last two months that I want to see. So I change December to November and I click away and then I click on the apply button. Now Google re-renders the information and now I have the last two months of traffic reports showing up on my dashboard. And that's pretty cool too, but maybe that's not what I'm looking for either. Maybe instead what I want to do is I want to see the last month, but what I'd really like to do is I'd like to compare it to the same time period the previous year. So I'll just come in here and I'll change the dates. Oop, got away from you there. And apply and now basically what we're seeing is the blue bar represents the previous month the green bar is the same period time last year and that dual uh, approach showing us both times and comparing them goes down throughout the page on the dashboard so for example look at the site usage we can see that we had about 10,000 visitors this month which is a 44 percent increase over our traffic last year at this time Likewise, page views are up. We had almost 19,000 this year, which is about 27% higher than the previous year. Now, the pages per visit, in other words, the number of pages that people visit while they're in a session, uh, is down from last year by about 11%, down to 1.83 pages. Now, I certainly would like to see more pages per visit, but this isn't a metric that I'm going to spend too much time worrying about because it's not really all that important to me how many pages people visit on my website. What's important to me is whether they fill out the contact form, whether they sign up for our email newsletter, or whether they pick up the phone and call us. Because really, who cares how much traffic I get? I really just need to get business. And your approach should probably be the same. Unless you're selling ads on your website, really the pages per visit is probably not the number one metric you should be concerned about. Same thing with our atrociously high bounce rate. 72% is kind of embarrassing here. Um, why, bounce rate, for those of you who don't know, are the number of people or the percentage of people who visit only one page on your website. Now, there's a few reasons for this, and one of the big reasons is we happen to do really well for a particular keyword phrase on our site that doesn't really lead people to where they want to go. But these aren't people that we can necessarily help anyway, so it's not my number one concern on the website. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with living with, with such a high bounce rate. You can also see that the average time that people spent on the site is a little bit lower than last year, and our percentage of new visits is off by a little bit too. The flip side of that, of course, is our repeat visits is up by the same percentage. Now another way we can look at the information is instead of having all visits as the only indicator, we can also break this down to search traffic, the traffic we get from search engines, direct traffic, the traffic that when somebody types in our URL, and referral traffic when somebody comes from another website follows a link to our website. So we can just click on apply now, we get rid of the date comparison, and instead we can see how that traffic breaks down over time. And this might be of interest to you to find out how much of your traffic is coming from the search engines compared to referral traffic compared to direct traffic. Let's go back and clean this up just a little bit. Click on apply. 
Now the dashboard is very customizable. So you can come in here and you can go ahead and if you wanted to get rid of keywords, for example, you could click on the little X and that would remove that report from the dashboard. Likewise, if you just didn't like the organization of the page, you might want to bring the visitor overview up above keywords. It's as simple as drag and drop. If you're looking throughout the rest of Google Analytics and you find a report that you'd like to see in the dashboard, every report with a click of a button can be added to the dashboard as well. And that's basically the dashboard on Google Analytics. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope that you have Google Analytics installed and that you're checking your reports on a regular basis. And we'll be back to talk about more on Google Analytics and some of the reports that you want to make sure that you're taking a look at in our next video segment. Take care and have a good day.